Okay, welcome back out to the garage. It's Monday morning. It's cold out here. I think we got down to about one degree this morning. Um, that's Celsius for my American friends. I don't know what that is. About 34, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I'm going to try and do a little bit today. I've had a bit of a clean up. I'm tired of that bench up a bit. Put some of this stuff away. I use anti-seize for lubrication when I was tapping the holes out in this. Um, today, I'm going to see how I go. Um, I'm not feeling the best today. I want to try and get something done, but um, I've had a bit of a, a visit from the black dog and the bugger won't go away, so um, I'm going to see how I go without buggerising it up. Um, at, at least today I want to try and do these. Um, get that guide sorted and get the, the on the back, I'm only going to put a short one. It doesn't need to be long, I'm just going to put about that long drill at the same size as that hole and just sham for the end so it's easy to get in so because this will be off anyway so it's going to be easy enough to force it in so not force it in push it in um see how i go if i come good which is i'm hoping i will i'll try and get a bit more done but and i'll take those burrs off um once i get all that done it'll be ready to pretty much ready to test so if I get that done today, tomorrow, I may harden these. <sighs> yeah, harden those. Um, temper them. Um, I'll just do them in, in that oven. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm going to make... Just It's only going to take me a short while. I'm going to make a... Um, uh, a little GoPro mount, the same as I put on my Harley for a subscriber. I told him ages ago I'd make him one and forgot all about it. Um, so I'm going to dig up a piece of 3 mil plate and make one. I don't know if I'll video that. I already videoed the one I made for my bike. And then we'll get back into this. Wednesday and Thursday are out. Wednesday I have to go up to Corinda to get some paperwork signed. Um, and Thursday I've got to go down to Singleton to see the doctor about me left hip. Um, so we back into it Friday. So I've got today, tomorrow, Friday, three days this week. So I want to try and get this done so I can test it by the end of the week. Um, yeah, and then I can start on the framework. The framework shouldn't take that long, really. It's not a huge job. It's not quite as fiddly and as... Um, time consuming is all this stuff so I want to try and get this done today so just so, like I said so I can harden these tomorrow temper them and then test it once that's done then I'll strip it take it out and sandblast everything I was going to powder coat it but I don't know whether I'll be able to oh I could I suppose I can't oh yeah I might be able to powder coat that I don't know yet but th this and all this stuff I can um, I'll be able to powder coat it. Um, yeah, once it's sandblasted and cleaned up, like I said, once I dress it, and it, it'll come up, it will look a whole lot better than that. But anyway, I'm starting to talk too much again, aren't I? All right, just let me sort some stuff out, and then I'll put you back in the stand, and we'll, we'll have a look at what we're doing. Okay, I've got the welder fired up. The noisemaker's going. And I'm going to tack these on and then pull it all apart and then weld these and then take it up and set it up in the mill. Just hang on a second, I'll put you in the stand and um, once I've tacked these I'll, um, I'll turn you on and we'll have a look. Right, now, let's pull this apart. That one rolled all the way up the 
garage, anyway. You can see I've got it tacked in there. Uh, yeah, I'll have to take that out. Oh, ow! That was my knuckle cracking. sure it won't fit because I've got these too far forward well that was rather stupid wasn't it oh that's all right I'm still it's not gonna be hard to cut a little piece off of it. I'll make some noise Fit back in there. Forgot to spray it with anti-spatter. There we go. It doesn't quite fit. That's all right. That's all I wanted. I want to have to skim it. It fits that way. Let me get a hammer. The size that. Look at it. What a monster. because I want it to be tight, I don't want it to fit. There we go. I don't want it to fit in easy, I want it to be tight so I can, so I have to machine it. So I have a nice machine fit, so it'll fit nice there and back there. Just that back. I'm going to knock over a little. Again, I'll, I'll use the monster hammer. That should be fine. For anyone that's curious, that seems like an awfully small hammer. It's uh, what we used to call a, a marking out hammer for center punches when you're marking out stuff. Okay, we're back again. The neighbour popped in to say hello. Um, I'm going to weld those now and then go down and set the machine up. So, well, once I get you something now, I don't like welding this on camera because I don't know what it's going to do to my camera. I know a lot of people do, but. Um, it's awfully bright and you can't see anything anyway and I really don't have another person here to stick a, a, um, a helmet. I've got a, I've got two water helmets so I could put one in front of the camera but I need somebody else to operate it so let me sort this and when I get up on the mill down there I'll bring you back and um, we'll play games. Stay tuned. Right, we've got that on there ready to go. It's all welded on. That looks a little bit dodgy but that's all I can do. It's just to hold it down. That's screwed up reasonably tight because I got this level, pulled this down on here and there's two clamps at the back. So what I'm going to do just quickly first up is just face them flat. Um, the only problem I've got with this, oh, I suppose I could turn it around backwards, can't I? Is putting the head in there to, to test it if it's going to fit in that buddy in between there. But now we'll make that work. Well, let's do some machining.
just the barest of cleanups. So now I'm going to come over to this side, touch this side, do the same, and then I'll see how we fit. Uh, set that at zero. Unlock. Sorry for putting my hand in your way. See it flexing. I'll just have to put the level back on it. Oh yeah, see that's that's not too bad. Then we need to make sure it fits this way. It will, I might just need to clean that up. Let me do that with the linisher actually. Um, just let me turn you off for two seconds and we'll come back. Alright, uh, I've got it all sorted. I'll show you when I'm finished here. I'm just going to chamfer these off now. and back down and we'll have a look and see where we're going but I think I've, that's pretty much got it stay tuned right I've got it all bolted back in and that's sturdy solid as a rock and when I operate it hang on let me make sure you zoomed out yep and look at that it just passes neatly which is what we want and when it's all the way down, you see it covers that hole. So that's where the wire well, goes well past it to there. So that's where the wire will be cut. Um, so it's not, as I say, it's not 100%, but once I put it in there, you can see there's a slight gap here. But once I put it back, uh, it fits fine. And that clears, so it's, it's actually out but it's actually in my favour because when you're crushing cans when you put it back it moves it over just a fraction so um, so that won't need to come anywhere near that while it's crushing cans so and when that's sitting in that position with those loose that is solid it doesn't move at all so that's what I was after and I was after it doing this you see that that passes beautiful uh, i haven't tightened this right up yet because i want to start running it before i start nipping that up just to wear everything in because it's still a little bit tight to run by hand so what i'm going to do now is find something to put here so stay with me and we'll come back in a sec okay i've cut a little piece off stuck it in the lathe um, and what i've done because it's so close to chuck i've actually put this back on i hate the bloody things but it's going to stop the water from flinging out all over the bloody place. So it only takes two seconds to take it back off again. So whenever I'm drilling, 
I'm gonna put that see because unless I move that, that's in the way of getting stuff behind here. I could always move that down to here. It's not really an issue, but might even do that yet because there's no safety switch on it. I don't have to use it. So let's drill this thing out and make it look right. Better go the right direction. I'm not going to try and drive the half inch drill all the way through that. Sorry, my arms are the way. If you can see, can you see that? Oh, yes, you can see that. Job. They're still a little bit on the floor, but it's a lot better than what it would have been. So, so let me see if my chamfering tool will fit in there. Yeah, not as big as I'd like it, but. Like that, and it's slowing down a little. back down and see how we're going to fix it to the to the backing stay tuned one thing I forgot see how close that hole is to there sorry again I'm not looking at the screen we need to machine the back of that down nearly to the hole not quite so I've got this I've swapped everything over so now I'm just going to machine this down I'll do it off camera you don't you've seen me machine shit a thousand times so I'll get that done and then we'll have another look that should be close enough now let's go down and have a look Right, uh, that'll go and I might have to trim a bit off that. I will have to trim a bit off that. That should be fine. I'm just going to take some off there to fit over the top of that weld. Not a whole lot, but a little. I'll bring you back when I'm done with that. Stay tuned. Right, uh, what I, do, what I did to so see that fits now that's located on that half inch drill. Actually, it was tight to get on, I can't get the bars back out now. But that's how it's lined up. I machined a bit out of that weld and a bit off that. So I might just make it fit a little bit better. It's the drill bit, I think it's not that. But you can see where I machined that. 
took this off, put it in, machined that little chamfer on there. And actually I might just leave it as is because I can get that drill in there and use that to line it up. Look at that. So what I might do now is I might weld weld it in, take that out. Um, I'll give that a full weld, I'll take this off, I'll tack it, take this off, give that a weld, weld it down the back, and then I'll stick it in the mill and just face the top off just to make it look nice. Stay tuned, I'll bring you back in a sec. Alright, there we go, that's done, and that lines up nicely. So, when it's in this mode, this is how it'll be um, for cutting copper. Um, that's not a huge gap there, is there? But, let me hit this. Look, that fits in there, that's all we need, basically. So we just feed it through, hit the stop. I see another problem. But it's okay, I'd rather see it now. Can anybody else see the problem? When it cuts it, this is going to be in the way. It should fall off still, it shouldn't be a problem. Because I can work that out, I'll leave that till I actually test it. Because, because when it cuts it, it'll be up about here. So that should be enough, and it's probably only going to be cutting them this long. So, we'll see. I, if I have to adjust it, I will. That's not really a problem because I can always take some out of here. Um, I've got more than enough meat there to take some out to let the stuff fall through. Um, yeah, I just I don't want to take too much of this strength out of here because otherwise this side's going to be nice and solid. When it cuts, it's going to want to do this on this side, flex it. So, but that's coming together now. And... As I say, it'll be bolted in position there, just feed the wire through. That's it. And the stopper, I've got to make the stopper somehow. Yeah, but I'll, uh, I've got to duck into town and get some, get a nut, one of those long nuts, similar to these off the me clamp kit. Can't just use a single nut because that gives you that too much play. But they've got, I mean, I think they're actually a bit longer than that. I, I have got some here, but they're, they're huge. They're um, three-quarter. I don't want anything that big. So I made screw jacks out of them. Um, so I've got to get that. Oh, jeez, I've got steel on my finger. Oh, little tiny one too. Ouch. Oh, tweezers time. But anyway, I'm going to have some lunch. And see if I come back out after. If not, then I'll record tomorrow's and get it up tomorrow. Actually, a neighbour come across and I need to go and have a look at a computer for her, so might do that after lunch. But that's... i just got to sort of try and fix this to... Because it still moves just a little bit. But if you set it... Like, what are you going to use it? If you set it in that position, that'll just be part of the instructions for Dion. Set it in that position and tighten it. And that'll be fine. If it doesn't hit, which is what we don't want. We don't. Well, we don't want it to hit. It's not hitting is what we want. So I'll put the other bits back on. Just hang on. And there we are in can crushing configuration. Put the sides back on, and that's at full extension. So there's our gap. Um, I'm pretty keen to test that out. That will be tested before the end of the week. I'll, there's no reason why I can't start testing it. Um, tomorrow, I might even hot wire it back up and just, because I've only got a couple of these bloody clamps holding it on the bench, I might just work something out and bolt it down to the bench through one of those holes to make it solid and then I might run it and see. Just squash a few cans. I should be able to function test it now. That should be fine, because that's all I need. The rest of it, like the adjustment for the stopper and everything else, I can do later. So, let's do that tomorrow, eh? Rather than do it this afternoon after lunch. Because this is all done. This cutting head is done. Cutting head's finished. 
So tomorrow we shall function test it. Let's see. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared, a little bit worried, but oh, I've got to sort this too. I'm gonna to go into town and get some stuff. But I don't know if any electricians here. I mean I've bridged that, that that might look rough as guts, but that's heavy duty wire. Um but I've got to buy some brass bridges. But I don't know whether that's I think that's in Delta. Um, and I think it's more powerful. So it says here. Um, it did have here somewhere it had star and delta power ratings. Or I can't remember now, but I'll have to have a look. Um, if that or I'll have to make three bridges to go across there. I'm not going to use why well, that's not how it's going to stay trust me it looks dodgy but that's just how I had to do it to test it because I don't have any brass any thin brass I can use to make bridges out of it so I'll go and see what they got at Brooks Brothers they should have something in there I can slice up and make bridges I'll go and do a bit of research inside to see see what gives you more power star or delta I can't remember I'm not an electrician so anyway that's going to do me for the today, I think. Let's see if I can chase this black dog away. Bastards always come around when you don't want them to, don't they? So, um, stay tuned until tomorrow. Take care. Okay, welcome back out. Tuesday morning. And today, we're going to function test this. Uh, well, I did duck into town and got that for me adjustment. I was going to get smaller, but they didn't have stuff that would fit, like the, these, they're called junction nuts. I tried to get 12mm, but the thread bar they had was gal, and it wouldn't screw on. Same with the 10, same with the 8, so I got 16. A little bit bigger than I wanted, but it still, it'll fit on here nicely, so. Um, I did a bit of research on that. That is currently hooked up in star. Delta is straight across. Um, I'll put this the picture right here. So I, I couldn't find anything, but I come up with, with a brilliant plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut pieces of that off, split it and flatten it, and then cut the tabs out of it to fit these three here. So let's go straight across those terminals. I'm not going to do that today. Um, or I may, I don't know. I'll see what I, I'm going to clean all this crap off here. Um, and then look at a way of bolting this down because there's holes under there, as you can see. So I'll probably just put a, might even use the, um, the clamps off my mill. And just put a couple on there. Just one through here. Then one here. Just to hold it still. So, really, I've got me, me morning coffee when I went into town. I went and stopped at me mate Pete, the coffee guy. Got coffee. So, let me get this ready. Um, I've, I've said I'll clean all this up, find whatever I did with the bag, or get something else, put all these nuts and bolts in, and just pack all this up, get it, get it sorted. Um, and then I'll bring the the converter over and rewire it, and we can go from there. I'm a little bit nervous, a bit apprehensive, but we'll see. Like I said, and I've got to take this back out just so I can grease everything. I'll just put a little bit of grease on everything, and then I'm going to run it for a little while before I do any cutting. Um, since it's in the configuration it's in, I might squash some cans first to test it, and then we'll cut some that copper. I've got some short piece of half inch copper down there, and I've got a bit of aluminium. I'll try and cut that as well. Um, and then I'll get some wire. I don't have the sort of stuff that Dion will be cutting, but I might get some of that and just strip and wind some of the copper together, um, and then just chop some of that. Um, yeah, and see how it falls, particularly when I cut it, to see how I'm going to go. If it falls fine, which it should, 
I'll be able to put the, the catches around here and just divert it down into a bucket. So um, either that or it should just fall straight down because this will be on, on the edge of the table. Um, and this will be one end. So the bucket can go straight under. So it should be able to fall. Well, except the cans. The cans I might have to redirect. Just a little. Just put a little deflector on there to drop them into the bucket. So we'll see how we go. But anyway, give me a few and I'll get this sorted and we'll come back. I did a little bit when I was cutting up, but it's too hard to, to film it. Couldn't see much, so there we go. So now I'm going to clean up, clean this up, and hook up the power supply. Stay tuned. All right, we've got him on. I'll put a bit of grease in there. I'm just going to let it run for a little while. That bottom T-nut is not quite fully tight yet. I said, just want to run it. It's actually sounding better. The more it runs, the better it sounds. So, so you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. It's less drag already. That's flat out. It's wobbling a little bit, but we don't need to really run it that fast. About there will do. It's probably a little bit slower for cans. Okay, I'm gonna let that run for a couple minutes. I'll turn it off, tighten that T-nut, and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to start crushing some shit. Right, I've been running this for a little while. I did squash one can, but I have a problem. Well, not a major one, it's not a big problem. Just means I'm going to have to, once I've finished test, I'm going to cut some copper in a minute, put it back up in the mill, and take another 5 mil out of there, because when it crushes, it doesn't quite slide through. I managed to get it through, but that was only because I stuck the Allen key in there when it came up and it just crushed that little bit extra and it fell through. So it's only, you know, maybe 5 mil. It doesn't really matter. So that, it, it works fine though. It's, although that, Bearing that motor is noisy as hell. But once I get it all sorted, I can unbolt that. The bearing will take probably half an hour to change, but that's very quiet now. And I just gradually, I tightened the T-nut and it jammed it. Like it moved partially then stopped. So what I'm doing is I'm just running it for a few minutes and then I'll just turn it another, you know, sixteenth of a turn. It's nearly all the way up. And you can see it's wearing a nice shiny track there. So once it settles down, and that's only running, I think that's about, about 42 hertz, 42 and a half is I think where we're going to be crushing cans. I'm not sure about the copper yet, but I'll, like I said, very soon, as soon as I get this nipped up, I'll start running some copper through it and see how we go. I think it'll work. I think it will have plenty of grunt, so... As I said, from what I can gather by my research, when it's wired up, I don't know if I, I, I think I showed you the, the bridges in there. So that's the uh, bridges, and that's wired in star now. Uh, Delta, sorry. But anyway, whatever it is, that's, that's the, the one that gives you more torque. Um, and it gives you three times the current or something, I think it said. Like I said, I'm not an electrician, so I have a, a, a pretty good understanding of electrics and how to wire stuff, but when it comes to things like that, Google is your friend. And I've clamped this down here, as you can see. I've just got another nut like that underneath. Got one there and one over the other opposite corner. Yes, it's barely making a sound now. Got one down there. So I'll stop that in a second and nip out again and maybe run it for another 5-10 and then we'll be able to test it with some copper. 
And that, that motor's not even getting, that's still cold, so there's no load on it. I like it. So that, that there is rated for two, I think it's rated for 2.2 kilowatts, that's 0.75, so that will cope. Yeah. So once I once I can test it and make sure it cuts copper, then I will probably strip it, put it back in the mill, and take five mil out of that there, and then we'll be able to test it crushing cans. You can't really have it going too fast because you've got to get the can in there without squashing your hand, you know. So probably even run it slower. Out there for cans. I'm still in two minds of whether to put the the cassette in there because to do that I'm going to have to well no actually I can build it so that it guides the cans in properly because the cans aren't going to drop in until it comes all the way back so I'll think about it either either there's not going to be any real issues putting cans in there it won't be quite this high either so even though I'm going to try and make it adjustable um, but even then I think that the, the best I'll get is about a metre high, so that'll save Dion having to bend over or, or I mean he's got a trolley chair, you can sit on that too I suppose. But let me fiddle with this for a bit longer and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to cut some copper up. Alright, uh, I was going to cut some copper, but it won't cut. Why you might ask? Because the gap. I don't know what's going on here, that's in the right position. I thought oh, I've left it in the cam position, but no it's not the cam position. So I don't know what's going on. I'm at a loss. Because I'd set that before and that had probably three or four mil gap. There's over 10 mil there now. And I can't even cut wire because it doesn't completely, that's at the end of its stroke right there. And as you can see, so I'm bugging if I know. Um, where's me? I'm wondering if it's no, it doesn't look like it's doesn't look like it's bent. Alright, now this is really, really weird. I don't know. I'm lost. And I thought, oh maybe it's I did find that I'd forgotten to tighten that pin up and it was starting to walk out, but that, that wouldn't do it. I fixed that, I just tapped it back in. That'd only be since I started running it because I, I forgot to tighten it, so. But I didn't have any, it didn't have that under any pressure at the time, so. I don't know. I'm lost. I truly am. So, let me think about it for a minute and we'll come back when I've found an answer. Right, I've started to pull it apart. I've worked out what the problem is. I didn't think it was going to be a problem, but it is obviously. There's a weak point here, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's bent right here, um, and that will bend it that way, which will pull it away from the plunger. So what I'm going to do now is strip it completely. Um, and I'm going to and take the motor off, of course, take everything off. And I'm going to weld um, a, a gusset underneath it, right underneath. I'm going to go put two of them um, sort of in between the bolts, because that's going to go on the same spot every time. Um, I suspect if I hadn't machined that little bit out, it might not have bent. But see, that, that cutter jammed a couple of times. Um, while I was trying to get it tightened up, and I've cleaned it out, and you can see it's it's nice and smooth there now. Um, so I'm going to try and straighten this up, what I should be able to do, and then um, brace it. I'll have to probably have to put it in the press to straighten it, but that's fine. That's not going to be too hard. It's a 30 ton press, so it'll straighten that quite easily. So I'll straighten it um, and put two underneath. It only need to be. I might even use some of that, some of that 10 mil, that biz, and weld it underneath because it's going to um, 
be welded to the tro to the framework anyway, so a little bit extra underneath this, it's not going to matter. The only thing I've got to hope then is it doesn't, well it shouldn't, with all this, it's got four bolts, I even put the lock nuts on those, I can't get lock nuts in there, is it doesn't twist that way, but it shouldn't, because it's got this, these underneath here, um, this one, this one in the middle is welded to this, and you've got that bracket there. So once I stabilise this, that might solve that problem. I mean, the worst case scenario is I don't want to have to spend so much time and money on a on a motorised can crusher. I was hoping to make it um, cut copper. Worst case, even even like next level up, is I can make it so it cuts wire if it won't cut pipe. It should. It's bloody. It's one horsepower motor. It should. You know, I can't really go any bigger because then you're pushing your, your inverter too much. But let's just see, eh? I'll, um, I'll pull this apart now and cut some steel and, and weld this up. Straighten it, weld it, get that up in the mill. Cut that out. Cut it out. Um, and then we can start afresh. Can we not? Just um, bear with me for a few minutes. Right, I've got it out and you can see, I can see it there without even putting the ruler on it. See that? That's what'll do it. That'll do it. So, now I'm going to straighten it. Right, let's see if we can straighten this out. Do that out. I just had to cut, use this, I thought I'd use a solid piece. But one end, where I got it from, wasn't cut straight, so I just stuck it in the saw. I just want something a little bit sturdier then. That's the only other thing I've got here to... Uh, I do want to use that. I mean, not that I'm going to be putting a whole lot of pressure on it, but... But it's got to... A little bit more. Put that handle away so I don't run into it and I will bring you back soon ish stay tuned done a bit of weld prep machined on them and I just linished just above the weld prep just so I don't pick rust up in the weld but I'm looking at it and I think maybe you know, I've made two but I think I, I think I might only need one I mean I can't get too close to put the bolts in for, for that so I've got to get that right in the center there the only other alternative I thought is outboard, but which will work. But you know, I've got to make. Oh shit! Sorry, didn't mean to definitely. If I go right to the very outside, I might still be able to get the socket onto them. Let me have a look. Where's my bolts? That's not the same. What? I actually, I think that is the bolt I had on there. Oh yeah. I could go outboard, and I'll put a, you know, like a, it's not 45 degrees, it's actually 28 degrees, but it's good enough. But I've got plenty of, I've got enough there to weld, and then I can machine the outsides to make it look nice. And I'll get me bolts in. I think I'd rather over-engineer it than under-engineer it. Like I said before, well, obviously this was under-engineered because it bent. But when you look at it, it's only mild steel. And it bent here. So you know that's eight mil, not ten. So and that's and that's bisloy. So once I weld that down, and I'm not gonna fully weld it because that will make everything warp. I'm just gonna stitch weld it and I'll mark it and stitch stitch it and then on the I'll do it there in the middle on the opposite sides. So I think that might work. Well not not might, it bloody well will work. 
So, I think I'm going to call it a day. I want to get this video off and join it with yesterday's and get it up um, tomorrow when I come out. Uh, I think I'll weld that first, then while it's cooling down, I'll go and put this up in the mill to take this bit out here. Um, yeah. And then I'll start reassembling it. And then just I'll, I'll just fine tune it. As you can see, I put that screw in there so I can turn the thing on. I'll put some oil in it too. This morning I put about half a litre of oil in it. Um, so I can turn it over like that without tipping the oil everywhere. So I mean that that'll bring my gap that'll bring my gap back now that that's straight. That's fine. But the only thing that I'm gonna worry about now is is that machine going to be strong enough to cut the copper once I get it? If I can stop that flexing, it might have enough oomph, but I don't know whether it's going to actually stall the machine out. Um, because it stalls it out when when this bites. Before I said I had to shim that, I don't. I've got to shim that. Um, so I'll do that tomorrow as well. Anyway, we put it back together and try it. As long, if I can get it to crush cans and cut wire, then that's good. Then I can start working on what I'm going to do to make it cut copper pipe. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to take these off and I'm going to sharpen them up and then harden them before I do anything else as well. Um, I'd have worked out while I'm yammering on why these old ones didn't harden fully. Because when I put them in the oil, which is inside that that ammunition case there, I just dropped it in there. What you've got to do, I was watching a couple of guys that do forging and, and make knives and, and swords and stuff. When you put it in, whatever you, you're quenching it with, you've got, to, you've got to jiggle it. You've got to move it. Because otherwise it gets that hot air pocket around it. And, and it cools down too slowly. Um, even cools down... Like it, it hardened more in the air, the air hardened more. Um, so that's what I did. I just, when it was glowing, I just dunked it in the oil. You've got to actually, you've got to actually shake it to keep the oil or water, whatever you're quenching, in, in contact with the steel. So there's another lesson learned. Thank you, YouTube. Um, yeah, and and this bloody thing. Um, anyway, like I keep saying, you can only pee with the dick that you've got there's no sense trying to do it with someone else's so um, we'll tinker along and as I said worst case scenario we'll be able to crush cans incredibly well and cut up copper wire but you know I did promise Dion I'd cut pipe with it so I'm going to do my darndest to see if we can make it cut copper pipe so we'll get there we will get there. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm sitting here. I'm start. The, I'm sitting here thinking and videoing absolutely nothing. So, um, thanks for hanging out. Those that hung out. Oh, while I think of it, uh, I don't know who saw my video of my man cave. Um. YouTube um, notifications. Uh, where is it? Aaron, where are we? There we are. Aaron Schofield I was the first one to say yes, please. So he'll he'll get the um, the piston clock sent to him over in the US. I've received an email from him telling me his postal address. So congratulations, mate, and um, I'll get that over to you sometime this week. Probably Friday I'll post it out, so it'll probably take another week or two or ten days after that to get there. So, um, yeah. So yeah, congratulations to him. Um, now it's not it's not a huge thing. You know, I think I was selling those for about eighty dollars each when I made them. Um, um, I've seen them online. They're probably done a little bit glossier, but I've seen them online for a hundred and twenty. Um, so you know. Just stuff I had hanging around, so I'll post that over to you soon, mate. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, 
stay safe. Peace.